Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 295. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook. Hey, this workbook only has one trick, and there's two workbooks. I have a source data, and I have a drop-down list. Hey, so guess what? We are going to see how to do data validation. We're going to have a list in this source data. Right here, I'm going to click on this. We're going to create a list here. And when we go over to the workbook drop down list, we want to do data validation drop down, but have it look to the other workbook. Now, let's just see if we can do it right off the bat. I'm going to start in source data. And this is going to be list. I'll have a list and then I'll put some data in it. Control B for bold and I'll put thing one. And just put a few. You could have as big a list as you want. All right, so this is the source data. Now I'm going to go back over to our other workbook. Alt tab works between uh, open applications. And here I'm going to put uh, in the sheet called drop down, I'm going to put drop down. Now in 2007, you go to data and there's a little uh, right there. My screen is all scrunched up. It should be right there. Boop. Data validation in 2003, you go to the data menu and then data validation. The keyboard shortcut that works in both versions is Alt DL. We go to list and then I click here. Now I'm going to um, try and go to my other workbook. Uh-oh, I'm clicking on my other workbook. I'm using Alt-Tab. Forget it. Well, as we've seen in other workbooks, when you do data validation, you cannot go to another sheet in your workbook unless you have a name. But you can't. So you definitely can't just start here and go to that other workbook. All right, I'm going to click Cancel. And in fact, we could create a name. We're in the drop down workbook here, drop down list. We could create a name that has workbook references, which means it looks over the workbook. But that won't work either, because data validation will not allow it. The only way data validation drop down list is going to work is if we actually have the list in the cell somewhere in this workbook. So watch this. Uh, we're going to go uh, to this sheet right here. And since we can't do it with data validation, we can force the issue by creating a formula here that will actually look over here and get the data and bring it back to this workbook. All right, I'm going to call this column get data from other workbook. And uh, I'll add some, some color here. All right, and uh, we're going to. We can make this as uh, big as we want, depending on uh, how much data you have over there. I'm just going to make it a little big, bigger than our list over there to show you that you can actually add and subtract values, and that'll work. In this cell right here, I'm going to do a formula equals if. Now, we need to go over to that other workbook. So before we click anywhere, you go over to the workbook. I'm going to use Alt-Tab, and I'm going to click on the first cell. And now notice up here, there's a workbook reference. In square brackets is the workbook name. The sheet name, see this is source data, is followed by an explanation point. Oh, but look, by default, they give us an absolute reference. So I'm going to click in the middle of that and then hit F4 to toggle back to relative reference, because that's what I want. I'm going to actually copy that, including the little apostrophe, Control C. Now, here is the formula. We're um, back in this workbook right here. Watch this so I can go like this. If that equals blank, and blank is double quote, double quote. So if that cell over there is blank, what do I want in this workbook? I want a blank to indicate that there's nothing over there, double quote, double quote. Otherwise, the value of false will be control V, our workbook reference. Close parentheses, and that will work. Control Enter, and let's copy it down maybe to the 11th row. I'm going to add some border here just so I can see uh, how far down I've defined my formula. All right, now let's test this. We're in the drop down list. Let's go back over to source data. Let me just add uh, thing 6 here. Come over here, and sure enough, it showed up. All right, now 
we are in drop down list and we have successfully created a list of values from the other workbook. That's the real big trick here because now we have the, the list here in this workbook. Now we have to do a couple more things before we can add a drop down because notice the drop down is on this sheet but our uh, list is on this sheet. You're not allowed to do data validation unless this has a name. Now we could just name it but then if we added data to the bottom our drop down wouldn't pick it up so we're actually going to have to name use a, a dynamic or the, use the offset function in a formula inside of a name. So uh, before we do that, we actually need to count how many items there are here. Now we could use count a, uh, but notice this formula puts a blank and count a uh, will count these blanks. So let's put the word count here. And um, we're going to do the formula. Since we only have words, we're going to say equals count if, and we're going to highlight this whole range here. This could be as big as you want. It could even be the whole column. And what do we want to count? The, the criteria for counting is words. And here's the criteria you can use to count words. In double quotes, question mark, asterisk, double quote close parentheses. Now what this does is the since um, oh, well the question mark is a single character so it'll pick up any time we have a single character and then the asterisk says as many characters as you want so the word could be of any length. Now the nice thing about this is it avoids using count out which would count the blanks. I'm going to control enter and there are six. Now we have the height of our range and we, we need to create a dynamic range using a name. Control F3 is the um, keyboard shortcut to get our name manager, or in earlier versions, this was called define names. And I'm going to click on new, and we're going to define our formula right down here. All right, let's name it something better than that. I'm going to name it dynamic range, no spaces. And here's our formula equals offset open parentheses and there's five arguments all right the first argument in offset is where do you want your range to start I want it to start in a2 comma the second argument is I know you want to start in a2 but you need to go down or up from that position in terms of rows no so I'm gonna put zero because I want to stay in a2 comma the third argument is left to right how far left to right do you want to move from a2 I want to stay in a2 so I'm gonna put zero comma the fourth argument is how tall is this, and there it is. I click on that cell right there, comma, and the fifth argument is how wide is it. It's one column wide, close parentheses, and then click OK. Now here's how you test to make sure you got it right while you're in the Name Manager or Define Names dialog box. You click on this, boop, and if the dancing ants are dancing around the right range, you got it right. I'm going to click Close, Save, I'm going to Control S. Now I can go over to this drop down right here and um, drop down sheet and do Alt D L for data validation, Tab L for list, Tab. Now I don't remember what my name was, but what you do is you type equal sign and then, then whatever name you just defined. So I'm going to use my F3 key, F3. Notice Control F3 opens the name manager and F3 just gives us a list and allows us to double click and it pops the name in with an equal sign. All right, now I click OK. Now let's see if this worked. This is exciting. It looks like it did. I'm going to select Thing 4. Now I'm going to go over to the other workbook. I'm in drop down, and I'm going to change Thing 4 to Rad. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom and type Super. And then I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to type a final um, item, Mr. Excel Site Rules. All right, so we've, this is in the source data, and we've changed something and added some things to the bottom. Alt-Tab, I come back over here, drum roll, and sure enough, it got the rad and it got the dynamic range. That was all dependent on our trick, creating a formula here, a way of counting words, and also defining a name. Now, one for the thing, if you had um, numbers and words, we could do this, equals count. 
of this whole range, however big it, oops, equals count. And then this whole range here, that counts numbers only, plus this count if for uh, words. And then that will give us, um, I'm going to click no, click OK. Looks like I have an equal sign right there. And so if I had numbers also, that formula would work. We don't have any. But if we did, watch this. If I uh, change this super to 43, right? notice this formula here uh, up it would give us the right count. So you would substitute that there. But for us, <coughs> Control-Z, I'm going to keep it all words. All right, so we'll see you next trick.